So I'm going to ask the question, when we have new treatments for degenerative diseases, will it be possible to use them in the developing countries? And hopefully discuss that with the people in the audience, because I don't have a great deal of experience of developing countries. And there are new treatments beginning to emerge. They're not there yet, but we can see that they're going to come over the next few years, because we have new technologies to take a skin sample from somebody who has an inherited disease like motor neuron disease and turn those cells into nerves, which if the disease is inherited will also be affected by the same disease. This for the first time gives us the opportunity to compare those disease cells with health, healthy nerves and ask what's the difference in order to understand the reasons why the disease develops. And the final objective is to use these cells as the basis for assay systems for look, to look for small mo molecules, potential medicines, which we, if we put them into those cells will correct that abnormality. It won't exactly cure the disease, but it will prevent the development of the symptoms of the disease and so hopefully make it much easier for the patients. We're studying at the, uh, motor neuron disease at the present time, but we have other projects coming along to study dif different forms of heart disease, uh, to work on, on the liver. Uh, essentially any tissue that you can produce in the lab can be studied in this way. Does the conditions that you find in the developing world, do they present a particular issue, a particular challenge to your work as compared to um, so-called first world countries? I'm sure they would, but this is one of the things I want to discuss with people in the audience this afternoon who have far more experience than I have. Two of the speakers already this afternoon have mentioned the fact that people in the developing world are beginning to demand new treatments. And the, whereas in the recent past, the most common diseases in those countries were infectious diseases, they're beginning to be controlled. And another speaker mentioned that what he called non-communicable diseases are beginning to become apparent because infectious diseases are not having the effect that they did. So I think that by the time our new methods have come along, in fact five or ten years' time, there will be beginning to be the first demand for these treatments in the uh, developing countries. And the point that I'm making to the audience is that generally, initially, people expect regenerative medicine to involve transplantation of cells into patients, which is a very expensive, very high-tech process, very difficult to apply in a developing country. Whereas the things that I'm describing would involve the production of pills or possibly injections, which it would be much easier to give. And so I would be fairly confident that by the time we've developed the treatments, in many places in the developing world, there will be the opportunity to apply them. Would it be fair to say that um, it might be a little surprising to hear you um, argue for some of the things you're, you're saying, given that you're known for your, your work, Dolly the Sheep and, and um, gene therapy and so on, you're, you're suggesting there actually might be a, a, a chemical, a, a, a drug treatment rather than the, the sort of work you're best associated with? I think that's true. We have actually been making this point within the academic community for several years now, and I think it is generally accepted, but you're quite right, it is a little bit different from what I and many other people expected two or three years ago. And do you think that the, the challenges that you see in the third world, in the developing world, um, are those challenges that are going to be overcome uh, with, with, with ease, or, or is it a, 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 an insurmountable problem as you see it? I think it's neither. It's in the middle. It, it can be overcome, but it will take a great deal of effort, and we've been hearing about some of the efforts that are, that are already being made in the talks already. And I also think it's vitally important that we do overcome it to make the world more equal, so that when somebody develops a new treatment at any part of the world, it can be, then be applied in any other part of the world to the people who most need it. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.